Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today I'm going to revisit the peace sign. So we got the regular peace sign, which I've been doing for many years. And then last year I saw somebody, they were trying to make a regular peace sign and accidentally created what I dubbed the huggable peace sign because it just looks like it has two arms, two legs and a head here just ready to give you a hug. So I promised to do a video for this and when it finally came about, the circumstances, all of a sudden I was doing a live video and I think I just kind of made it a little bit confusing as I folded this up and was trying to explain both ways. So I wanted to go back and do another video because they're both folded up pretty much the same. There's just uh, one minor difference in the folding that I was able to suss out and figure out how this here was created. So. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, hold on, let me set up again. Okay, first things first. So I'm going to do the, the two peace signs, the regular peace sign, the huggable peace sign, on two tapestries. But the tapestries are too big for me to just fully show you here on this small table how I fold them up initially. So I just thought I would start with that. The main thing is you want to keep track of where your top and your bottom is. Uh, on my tapestries, there's a little label down in the corner of the bottom, so I just like to make sure that, that I keep that straight. So the way that I find, first off, the center of my tapestry is to fold it in half and fold it in half again. So I'm just basically folding it into the corners. That gives me this first center point so I will use a washable marker make a line there and then the next thing I do uh, typically I will just kind of freehand fold it but just so you guys know the approximate angles and stuff that I am using uh, these here are each marked out at 60 degrees so you can line your protractor up here and that one's at 60 this one here is at 120 so I draw my two lines on there and then the next thing I do is I fold up on this line matching this line up with this up here and once again I will do this on the big tapestry here in a minute but I just want to show you in advance what I'm doing so I'm folding that up and then I'm going to fold that back down and I'm folding it right along this line here so that is how I'm going to start both of the tapestries and then I will show the difference between the regular peace sign and the huggable peace sign. It's just all in where this top part here that gets folded down is what changes the two designs. So let's set that aside. So I have done the same thing with these two tapestries that I just showed you with that piece of paper. Let me set up again here. Okay, so I measured both of these out here and like I say I've drawn a little line on here just to indicate the difference between the two. And like I say here's the tag down here so I know that is the bottom of my tapestry. So this here is going to be the top on both of these. So let's start out we're going to fold the regular peace sign. So, like I say, I have my center part. This here is the center of the tapestry that I figured out the same way here. And I drew these same lines onto my tapestry that I drew onto this piece of paper. Now I'm going to fold up. I'm going to fold right along this line, matching this line up here. Then I'm going to take that and fold it back down. So I'm just taking this line that was at the bottom, I fold it up 60 degrees, and then I fold it back down 30, which is just half of that 60. So there is going to be where I fold the top part down. Let's get this. So this here is the top part. I'm going to take this line right here, and I'm going to line it up right here for the regular piece sign. So once again, you can hold your finger at the center here and just fold this down. Now, from there, if you haven't drawn your lines on, then you can use your piece of string here and line up with a slip knot. I do have a quick little video on how I tie a slip knot. 
but you're going to line up, figure out how big you want to make your peace sign, and then draw your line. And this here is just a, about a quarter of a circle there. So that's going to be my fold line on my tapestry. And that's for the regular peace sign. So now let's set this one aside for a second. And I'm going to show you the huggable peace sign. Now I know I'm jumping back and forth, but I think this is just a good place to show you the difference here. So now once again, I have this lined up the same way as the piece of paper. I found my center. I drew these same 60 degree lines on. I'm going to still hold right here. Fold this line up to that 60 degree point. So I'm doing these the same up to that point. And I'm going to fold this back down. So once again, this line is coming down to this crease. And then you see I have the huggable peace sign with arrows up here. The regular peace sign was down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and instead of putting it here with the, like the regular peace sign, I'm going to line it up right here next to this crease. So that is the difference between the huggable peace sign and the regular peace sign is that bit of fold right there. I, instead of going all the way down to here, I just stop there. And now I need to do one more fold. And the way I do that is I'm just going to pinch the bottom here and I'm gonna pinch the top here, making sure that I get all of those layers. You don't wanna pinch just this, you wanna have all of that in the fold. So you can pinch there, pinch there, pick that up, set that down and actually I'll set it the other way so that it looks just like the other peace sign. Now once again, I'm going to take my washable marker. I have my string tied to it and I'm going to draw that same line on here. Okay. So now there is the huggable peace sign. And there is the regular peace sign. So pretty much they're the same except for this thick fold right here. It only leaves a little bit of a gap here where on this one the thick fold is right there leaving more of a more of a gap there. But we're going to fold both of these up the same and then here are my thick creases. Same over here, I got my thick creases. So we're going to fold these up once again the same way now along this arc here. So I will do the huggable piece sign first. And you want to make sure that you grab all the layers and that you don't pull this fabric. And you can tell if you're pulling it by this here creeping back. If by time you're done folding this up, your lines are no longer lined up here, then you have pulled some of your fabric back out of that fold. So you wanna make sure that when you pick this up, you're getting all of the layers down underneath. So when I pinch that, I'm pinching all of the layers, but I'm not pulling this top fabric here. And once you get to that thick fold, then you just kind of fold that in. And I just keep lining this up as straight as I can on the top here. And then at this point, you take your slip knot. Like I say I usually will leave my slip knot tied on my pen here. And then I can take that slip knot, slide it right over here, take up the tension. I'm not tying this really tight, I'm just holding that in place. And now I'm taking these thick folds over here, make sure that they're all still lined up nice and even. So you can kind of work them out, make sure they all come up to that nice point right there. And then I'm just going to kind of hold those in my hand, so I'm kind of folding them over so that I don't lose the creases at all. And then I'm just going to make a fold right here, and I'm lining up. This is my fold line here in the center, and I'm going to line this fold up right along that edge. So I'm just kind of folding my finger down in here, 
to get that initial fold started. And then I'm just going to lay that over top. So this, this edge here is lined up nice and even with this line on here. And then I'm just going to fold the rest of those in. And you just want to lay those down right next to it. And once again, making sure that you have all of your folds in here. If you lose these folds, it's going to distort your peace sign. Or in this case, the huggable peace sign. Okay, once I have that done, now I'm going to tie this and I just use my kite string. I've left my, my slip knot attached here, so now I can just easily wrap that around. I'll wrap just loosely to hold that in place. And now you want to set the width of your peace sign. So what I did was I drew the middle line, the fold line, but the actual lines that I'm going to dye I'm going to go about a finger and a half width on either side, maybe two fingers. This here is how wide your actual peace sign is going to be, and I'm going to go that same distance on this other side here, because this line here is the middle line, the fold line. Okay. So those now are the lines that I'm going to dye when I put my colors on. So at this point now I can kind of wrap that a little bit tighter right there on that line that I drew. And I'm going to transfer those same lines onto the bottom. So now I just kind of wrap that up a little bit back to the middle here and then I'm just going to wrap around and do the same thing. I'm going to wrap a couple times just to set that and then we're going to come back and tie this off. The rest of this I'm just going to scrunch up. We're not going to do that right now. I'll do that at the end. So now here's my regular peace sign and I'm going to fold it up the same way. I'm going to go ahead and get my slip knot ready. Like I say, there is a video on how I tie slip knots, so you can check that out real quick. I know it's hard to see with the string, but I did it with a rope to make it easier to see. So once again, you're going to fold and you're going to make sure that you're picking up all of the layers. And like I say, here's my thick layer here. You want to make sure that you don't pull any of this fabric back, so I kind of watch that edge there as I'm folding. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up, make sure that I have all of my creases in here. There should be three of them in there. A thick one and a couple thin ones. On the huggable piece sign, there's a couple thick ones. But you want to make sure you gather all those up. So like I say, I just do kind of a rudimentary fold on those to hold them in place. And then I'm going to come up once again and take this edge and fold it up in a pleat right next to this center line here. And sometimes it's just easy to get your finger in there to hold the place and then you can kind of fold the fabric down over and pull your finger out and then you have your pleat right there. And once you get started then it's easier to pleat those up. And then once again you have your string right here so you can wrap that up to hold that in place. figure out where you how wide you want your peace sign so we'll go right there and right there and then now I can finish tying this so now I'll go over line up with where I drew my line and just wrap that around a couple times and tie that or not tie it but tighten it and then I just work across and I can see that this here has kind of gone a little bit wonky so I'm just going to kind of pull that back over just to make sure that everything is lined up the more lined up you have your design the better it's going to come out so I just like to have that nice and lined up there and then I'm just going to wrap this back around into the 
the center and then out to this outer edge here. And I wrap it around the outer edge a couple times, pull that a little bit tight, and then tie it off. Okay, so there is the huggable peace sign and the regular peace sign. And I'm just going to scrunch these up, so we're going to hyperspeed and do that. The Huggable Peace Sign, the regular Peace Sign. You can see that they look pretty much the same. Like I say, there's just a difference in the fold there, making these folds just a little bit thicker in there. But I'm still going to do the same thing. I fold it along these lines, and I'm going to die along these outer purple lines here. Let's go ahead and get those lines put onto the back. I'm going to get some gloves on, and we'll get back and put some color on so stay tuned. Okay, we're back. Time to get some color put on these things. And I'm going to dye them in the same colors just to completely show the differences in the two designs here. So I'm going to do the peace sign in turquoise. And I like to start with these thicker folds first. And I'm dying kind of close to the edge here but not I'm not going all the way to the line just to let the dyes kind of soak in and spread some on their own I want them to go down into these deeper folds so that I get good saturation and since these are barely damp right now with soda ash uh, I'm drying dyeing them on a clean dry towel this is I feel helps kind of pull the dyes and things through plus it catches any little drips that I might drop on here but yeah I just like to get a good coat on these thicker folds to get that going down in and then in the middle we're going to do just a pink uh, it's a, just a fuchsia that I lightened up with just plain water oh and all these are just regular dyes there's no thickened dyes here you can use those, and I, I used to use those a lot for my outlines and my designs, but it's not required. You can put just regular dyes on. So, this here just gives uh, a border to the inside here from the turquoise spread in that way, and now we're going to put the same border on the outside here. Once again, I'm going to leave just a little bit of space and let this dye spread some on its own. If I put these right up to the line, they will tend to kind of cross over each other and mix early. And that's not a bad thing, but if you want to avoid it, like I say, just leave a little bit of white space, let it soak in, come back later and add more. But I can, I go back and forth between all of the colors, adding them all on in layers. Because if I tried to saturate completely with the turquoise, it might end up spreading out into the other areas just because it's looking for dry fabric. By applying all of the colors on here, it's forcing gravity to be the force that takes, that the dye moves through. And the inner part here probably needs the least amount of dye because it's folded up loosely and there's not there's layers in there but not as many layers as there are like in the peace sign area. So that's probably my last layer of fuchsia or the pink for the center part here. We'll add another part on the outside and then I'm going to check underneath. And this time I'm going a little bit closer to my line here. Okay, these sat for four or five minutes here. Uh, just give the dye time to soak down in. So now I'm going to take a peek underneath. And I can see that I'm getting good color. I'll probably add just a little bit more of the emerald on the other side. Because I can see some spots. But most of this I can see colors leaking through. And the same with the turquoise. There's a couple creases that don't have it but pretty much and the same with the fuchsia it's fully saturated on the outer edge and I can see it in bits and pieces so to me that is a good indication that I can add I think another layer of turquoise and the emerald green 
and be fine on that one. Now let's see this one. Okay, this one here is doing really good once again in the emerald. Probably a couple areas here that still need a little bit more dye. And then same thing with the, the turquoise. There's a couple places in these creases. Uh, the fuchsia looks like maybe one place there that but overall I think these look pretty good the dye is coming through here and I can see down like I say in these creases here that the dye is coming through so overall I think both of these look good I'm gonna add one more coat let it sit for a couple of minutes and then I'm gonna flip them and dye the other side and this time I'm going right up to these lines here since I'm on my last coat here just get that last bit touched up right up to the line and then we're gonna let these sit for a couple more minutes and I'll flip them and finish dyeing them so hang out okay we're back here let's take a quick peek and see yeah now I'm liking the way the colors are coming all the way through you can say this here is a white spot but I can see on both sides of that crease that the dye has penetrated there so I'm gonna call that one good we're gonna flip these both over so let's take a peek at this one yeah and that's the same way I think I got good color in all of the areas there so I should have good saturation so we'll flip both of those over and slide this around and then I'm going to just add one coat of these colors sometimes you can let them sit and you might go back and add a second coat but usually if you've got a good saturation from the top uh, this the second side only needs one coat to just kind of fill spaces in so that's all I'm going to do for these Now one more thing, I decided that I want to add a little bit of contrast. A lot of times I will do two shades of green when I do this, but I only used one shade. So what I'm going to do is just add just a little coat of black dye over top of both the top and bottom of these. So that's your own personal choice and your dyeing preferences. I just like a little bit of patterning on mine, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to go right up to the edge here I'm gonna stand back but I'm just gonna add one quick coat of dye to both of these and now I'm gonna flip these over in my tub and put dye on the bottom side also but after that then these are gonna sit and batch for 48 hours and then I will wash and do a reveal you should see the results here in about two seconds. Peace, love, light, and laughter.